little board. Beep. <laughs> Matt. Yeah. Stop your playing. But it's a chip. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that later. Daytime Toronto starts right now. Come Aww. on. And we are back with Toronto author and SSQ Watton expert, Eric Conroy. Oh. Eric, what did you bring with us? <laughs> this looks awesome. I was playing with it earlier. This is a model of the ship. That is a model of the ship. It um, was actually built by the guys that build the floats for the Santa Claus Parade. Okay. I, was a, uh, I was a director of the Santa Claus Parade for 29 years. And when I left to take on this project to bring Key Watton back, one of the head builders, Fred, thought it'd be a great idea if I had something I could carry with me. This is great for everybody and that can see the ship. So it's 105 years old, yes. a lot of history with the ship. Right now it's docked in... Mackinac City. In Michigan. Michigan. And it's making its way back home yes. to Port McNichol. Port McNichol. Amazing. Now, what's the history? What's so important about the ship? Well, I guess what people don't realize is that uh, there were a whole fleet of, of ships from the Canadian Pacific and Canadian National had a fleet as well that helped populate Canada. Back in the 1880s, uh, the government of the day needed to get more people to go out and, and populate Western Canada. Uh, they also need to be able to bring the grain from Western Canada back to Eastern Canada. And as you know, there were no airplanes in those days. There was right. no transport trucks. And the trains might be able to carry 20 or 30 cars, not like they have today. Mm -hmm. So they had these ships that would go up and down the Great Lakes during sailing season and bring people from the east to the west wow. and bring the grain down. How long would the trip take from it, one end? To it was three and a half days from Port McNichol to Fort William, which is now Thunder Bay. Wow. And there were actually five of these ships. This was one of the latest ones, and she had a sister ship that looked exactly the same called the Assiniboia. There's some pictures on screen of what it looked like back then. Yeah. What a mighty ship. Now, she was built in Scotland in the Clyde River uh, where all of the Edwardian steamers were built. She was actually built at the same time as a ship called the Lusitania. And the Lusitania was famous because it was sunk by the Germans in World War I, and that brought the Americans into the war because the Americans had so many people on it. But the Lusitania and this ship you see in front of you took their sea trials the same day on the Clyde. So, so that gives you a sort of an idea of the age of the ship. Oh, no. Well, when I hear it, it's five years older than the Titanic. It's five years older than the Titanic, and she has the exact same engine in it. Titanic had three of them. She has one. Is it a steam engine? Is it it's a coal a, engine? It's, it's a coal-fired steam engine. It's called a quadruple expansion steam engine, and it was fed by Scotch boilers. Scotch boilers. Scotch boilers. Is I don't know the why they're that called that. The scotch put in the I coal think in they or? were the boilers that they used to make scotch, but that's okay. where the, the name they're called wow. Scotch boilers. And it, uh, it was so long in the time, it had to be cut in half to be brought through the Welland Canal. So in, it, it steamed across the Atlantic, in Quebec City, just outside of Quebec City, it was cut in half and it was towed through Lake Ontario, through Welland Canal to Buffalo, New York, where it was reassembled. Then it was taken to Owen Sound, Ontario, where it was, it was fitted out and then it went into service. How many people would have been able to fit on this ship when it was crossing the Great Lakes? There were 86 crew and uh, 288 passengers and we could carry up to 40 cars. You'll see all the doors on the side. They were able to put automobiles on there, when it, which again is interesting because it was built long before the automobile was something that people actually thought there were going to be thousands and thousands or millions of. Sure. So the fact it could carry automobiles is really quite interesting. So this really is an important ship of what kind of solidified Canada as a country, bring everybody together to get back and forth. It's finally coming home now, back to where it all started, and it's being turned into a museum. Well, no, it's, it's, there will be a museum on board, but it's not just going to be a museum. The area that was the car deck is going to become public space where they can have plant shows or oh, wow. model train shows or any kind of public event will use the, the cargo deck on the main floor. The museum will be on the second floor. Um, on the third floor is a 122-seat Victorian dining room and about an 86-seat bar, which will wow. be used as well. Um, on the top deck, you'll see underneath the wheelhouse, there's, that used to be the officer's quarters. That's going to be turned into a ham radio museum and working weather radar. So all of the boaters in the area will be able to get instant information on the weather right in their own area. And we're looking at putting a 300-seat theater down where they used to carry the grain. 
So it's not just going to be a museum. It's an all encompassing. It's, it's going to be a working ship that doesn't move. That is incredible. What's the importance to be able to bring this ship back home to southern Ontario? Well, there's a number of things. One of the greatest to me, though, is the fact that it's going back to Port McNichol, which when the ships worked out of there and all the trains worked out of there, was actually referred to as the Chicago of the North. It was a huge place. It had 8,000 population. It had theater. It had a big hotel. It had bars and restaurants and men's and boys' wear and barber shops. When the ships and the trains left, it just disappeared. It became part of another township. I think the population is somewhere around 800 now. Um, so to be able to bring this back as a center for that town, to bring Port McNichol back, for, uh, back, back to life, and that part of, of, and it's not really northern Ontario, it's just on the cusp of Toronto actually. It's only an hour and a half from where I live in southern Scarborough. I live on the lake hour and a half to get there. I think that's great. Congratulations for being able to spearheading this initiative and bringing it back. Real quickly, what's the noise when you pull the, uh, pull the bell or pull the whistle? <laughs> Actually, the whistle doesn't work. Oh, I was hoping for a big, <laughs> loud boom. Well, for more information, go to sskewatton.com. And when we come back, Val will be in the kitchen with nutritionist Aviva Allen. Thank you so much for bringing it. Yeah.